then and let's get started so hi everyone this is our first session of unicraft summer workshop it's going to be called overview of unicraft which is mainly going to be actually the overview of craft cloud which is um if you go to craft cloud website uh this is a managed platform that's that's built using unicorn technologies uh, this provides you with a place where you can deploy your own application and see how it goes the so when you talk about craft cloud and unicraft and unicraft cloud we can think of let's say three components one component is the main technology which is called unicraft right so if you go to either unicraft.org or if you go to the repository, uh, just a sec here, this is where all the magic happens. This is the actual repo where, just a sec, uh, where we store the information, when the source code relies, Unicraft is a unikernel, or better called the unikernel SDK, which is a collection of micro libraries that come together in order to, um, uh, in order to uh, be able to construct highly specialized images. This is the information you're going to find on this website. Apart from Craft Cloud, something that's very relevant is going to be uh, Craft Kit. Craft Kit is what we call the companion tool of Unicraft. If you go to here to uh, CLI reference, uh, this is where you get the documentation for Craft Kit. The, it's, we call it the companion tool. This allows you to configure, set up, build, package, push, pull, deploy, run, debug, uh, application, unikernels based on Unicraft. So using Craft, you're going, to go, you're going to do all of this. So basically, if I were here and I would run Craft, I would get different items here. So it says uh, Craft build, Craft package, Craft run, craft nets creating networking and then craft cloud is the overall interface to communicate with craft cloud which give which gets us to the third spot of this uh, uh, let's say triad of components which is craft cloud or the unicraft cloud platform so the unicraft cloud platform is using unicornal technology and then you command this unicraft unicornal technology via craft Okay, or well, craft or craft kit. So for example, uh, what I'm going to do, I have a, a, um, a file, which, not, which I'm not going to show, that has my configuration for craft cloud. Uh, if you go, if you visit the main website here, you're going to say, hey, you're going to have to have a craft cloud token and you're going to configure a craft cloud metro. This craft cloud token, I'm, I'm not going to show you, of course, it's my private one. This is something you're going to get once you logged in, you signed up for Craft Cloud. So every one of you should have this Craft Cloud token in order to be able to uh, interact with the platform. That being said, let me at least show you what is my Craft Cloud token, uh, Metro, sorry. So my Metro is DAL0, which is Dallas0 but I'm going to then update this to use FRAS0. FRAS stands for Frankfurt. Uh, there are several other met metros, so some of you guys which may be in, uh, I'm not sure, India, China, or Southeastern Asia, you should be using SYN0, which is for Singapore 0, because that's closer to you. If you're living in the United States, you can use DAL0. So the metros are, if I recall, there are SYN0 for Singapore. So yeah, SYN0 is Singapore. Um, there's FRAS0, which is Frankfurt. Um, there's uh, DUB0, I think, which is Dublin. Uh, there's DAL0, which is uh, Dallas. And I think there's another one, but I don't know for sure all of them. I think there's, there is a command. So if we do craft cloud, craft cloud minus help, there may be a command. Yeah, metro list, sorry. Yeah, craft cloud metro list. Ah, so now we have FRAS0, DAL0, SYN0, there's no, uh, there's no Dublin, and Washington. So these are the metros you can use. And we recommend you use the one that is closer to you. So if you're from the United States or South, South, uh, South, uh, South uh, America, you can use Washington or Dallas. 
if if you are closer to asia you should use singapore if for if for from europe uh, we should use frankfurt so in my case i'm using the metro the sec craft cloud metro frazio right that being said let's do some items let me first look at what instances i have available so because i've 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 been working on this item before i have some instances that are already deployed let me remove them just to have this cleaned up i'm not going to remove caddy website because i want to keep it running but i'm going to remove tyke i'm going to remove uh this one no 21 i'm going to remove wordpress okay and now i only have the caddy website one deployed okay so this is a w imagine that you this is our way of interacting with the craft cloud platform and our goal is to have instances deployed is to me is to be sure that we can run different components we can run different loads we can run our own, our own application and that being said let's tune into something fun let's try to deploy for example what we have here uh, let's go into a node 21 uh, next.js right so what we have here this is uh, our example we're not going to go into the internals yet of a no uh, next.js based deployment there is a small readme but more than that readme what we have access to if we're going to go to all guides and we're going to visit next and we're going to have here all the instructions for running an xjs app and it says here yeah you should run this application this run command so i'm going to do just that i'm going to run this command to be able to deploy a node application on craft cloud a node next.js application on craft cloud so what it does here it does the local build you can see here preparing build it builds the root file system it packs everything nicely together it packages it now it pushes it to some registry and now it's starting it on that craft cloud website so what i have now here if i'm going to make a click on this i'm going to have this next.js instance opened up voila right so this one is something i just started using craft cloud uh, yeah maybe not this one this one here i just started and it says here yeah you started this instance this is the name it has a unique id it started this is the domain name um, how, my how much memory it uses it has a private IP in internally which i don't care about and i'm able to use it now you may not like for example this name hey who remembers no 21 next js blah 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 so what we can do here is we can tr we can create another instance we can say let's give it the name uh next js right simple one but then someone would say yeah if i'm going to do this it's going to create another next js instance the name of it is still going to is, is now going to be next js so it's going it's going to be easier for me to interact with it however going to see the domain name is still a kind of a custom one right so it, it says the name is next js but the domain name as stated here right is still i'm not sure broken moon if i want to have a proper domain i'm going to i'm going to use the subdomain acronym and i'm going to also say subdomain nextjs all right which is going to then create an actual uh, instance that's going to be named nextjs.fra0.craft.host let's wait for it ah the name is already taken so if i now look craft cloud instance ls this is already there so i'm going to remove it craft cloud instance remove this one and let's now create it properly so there was a clash right i had the same name as an ongoing instance it couldn't create it so i'm going to now redeploy it and is going to make it available on that easier to recall domain name you can see it here nextjs.fra0.craft.host click on this here and voila we have the proper thing here 
right? This is how we were able to do it. So now if I do craft cloud instance ls, I have the, these two instances. Note that if for some reason, I and you can also see how fast this is booting. So this is booting in 140 milliseconds. The entire virtual machine, because it's using Unicorn technology, is able to boot this fast, right? It's using reduced memory, it boots very fast, it's also very fast while running because it's based on this Unicorn technology. If I want to find some detailed information of what's happening, I can use craft cloud instance logs. And when I do this, I'm going to give, provide the name and it's going to me, give me some insight of the logging behind the scenes, right? Uh, there's something here that's called craft cloud instance log. For example, this one, and this is here. There is a trick which I'm going to show right now. So for example, I have here, it's not relevant. I'm just going to kind of, let's say, uh, peel my, uh, 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 make, make a bit of, uh, um, uh, how should I call this? Um, add myself on, uh, on some chair just here, if, uh, because I know this stuff. If, for example, you use node latest debug, so there's this particular tag, what this is going to end up doing, it's going to pull you a runtime of node on Unicraft that's providing logging information. So now if I'm going to use this command, let's, let me remove the names and the others. You see now it's, it's, it was pulling the node, the uh, node latest debug version. And based on that, you're going to see that when I inspect my image, I'm going to get extensive logging information. Let me just show you, let it start. So I'm going to say craft cloud instance logs. And now, right, you can see this is extensive information and that there's a bunch of it that's being provided by the image. Because there's quite a lot, the logs item has an option that's called tail. So you can see here craft cloud instance log, it has the item minus minus tail. So I can say minus minus tail 50. Uh, logs uh, instance name, sorry. Minus mile tail 50. And I now get only the last, and now it shows me the system call. So once again, this is only for developers. It's not something that's useful for this session. We're going to delve into this in the session on Friday. I just want to kind of, yeah, pride myself in knowing about this and show you a bit of a lot of the points that you can work with uh, craft kit and craft cloud when running all those applications and see how they work, right? Something I would like to show you is you can have craft cloud image LS and this shows you all the image that you have enabled. Now, because I've been toying with a lot of applications, I've already had these images over here. So for example, this one, which is the one I just built, I could use something like this, craft cloud instance create. I'm going to start it. I'm not going to name it anything. I'm going to just use, uh, let's say 256 megs of RAM. And then I'm going to use map, my map port here. And I'm going to pass this image and note how, start, how fast it is, right? So what I'm now doing is I'm basically just creating instances, craft cloud instance LS, and all of these instances are working. All of those you can see here. What I did here is I just created an instance from an image I had already deployed. When I was using this command before, the craft cloud deploy command, what this does behind the scenes does the following. It does the, let's say it does the pull, it, do, it does the build, it does the package, it does the push and then it does the instance create. What I did above, I just used instance create because these steps were already be done behind the scenes. Craft Cloud Deploy is your, let's say, your most user friendly application, uh, most user friendly command. But once you start to, once you have all of those items available, you can then uh, uh, get all those, uh, you can then start the um, 
uh, start these um, uh, these instances quite fast. Okay, and now let me just craft cloud instance uh, ls. Let me do grep after next. Uh, let me do some trick. Let me see if the trick works. It worked, and now let's do craft cloud instance remove. Okay, and now I removed all those instances and everything is back to normal. Okay, this is a preview of how you run with craft and how you deploy items on Unicraft Cloud to be able to have applications running on the cloud. For, uh, I'm not sure you have applications, you have web, web servers, you have everything, you have clients, you have customers. You need a quick way of deploying your services on the cloud. This is the way. You would use Craft Cloud, you would use Unicron technology for all, the, all of those uh, nice, fast, efficient cloud applications. I'm, I have just one thing to show you, but I'm going to just wait two or three minutes because I know I've demoed quite a lot of stuff. I'm going to also make available the recording of this, so worry not about this, to see what questions, what items are from, from your side. Let me also see if there are any questions on the, on the channel. So please, any questions? I know I've been, I went a bit fast, but if there's anything you want to ask, please go ahead. Of course, things are going to become more and more clear once you have, um, uh, once you have uh, access to, um, once you have access to, to the uh, Craft Cloud token and you are able to actually deploy applications. Yes, please. Yeah, you mentioned that when we do crop cloud deploy, it mm -hmm. does uh, more steps than what we see, like full. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Right. So full, I can understand. Like we we have something similar to Docker file, like uh, Unicorn file that mm -hmm. full, and then build the image and then push it on the. Is it? Like when we say push, is it on to the cloud instance? Yes, yeah, very good question. Yeah, very good question. So you have to know, make a difference between Craft Cloud Image LS and Craft Cloud Instance LS, right? Um, the Image LS, this shows you the image list. Do you know, I'm not sure, do you know Docker Hub? So Docker Hub is what we call a container registry, right? A container image library. This stores the actual container images. If, for example, I want to run an application, I would use something like Docker pool. I think we have hello world. Okay. What this, do uh, hello minus world maybe, yeah, so what this does, it is pulled from docker.io library, hello world, right? So now if I do docker image ls hello world, this is the image that I just pulled. Uh, I'm not sure if there's some sort of uh, extensive information here. Let me see filter format yeah yeah it is of so, uh, ls minus minus format json for hello world let me see okay so this is the image i just pulled from docker hub it's docker hub it was created 14 months ago i can do something similar i can pull the image for nginx It takes a bit longer because this is a larger image and it's stored somewhere in the local Docker cache. Okay, 
let, let, let's wait for it to be extracted just to have a full info. Okay, and now if I do nginx, this is the image. It's nginx, it has the size, it was created uh, on the 21st of, C of, uh, J of June, so 11 days ago. So this is the image. Now what I can do is I can do, if I do docker ps, for example, this shows me the actual containers, the actual instances I created from this image. If, however, I want to create an image, I would say docker run, and I would say, let me name my docker container nginx cunt, and then I'm going to start it from nginx. So what this does, this actually started a docker container, which is called nginx container, from the nginx image. So if I now open up another one and I say docker ps, you can see I now have the docker eng the, 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 the nginx instance, so the actual, let's say, process started from this image. If I close this, uh, I, I, I need to stop it like this, docker stop, nginx cont, and I can also remove it. So there's a difference between images and instances. And this is the same in craft out as well. These are images, these are instances. Images are basically archives. They consist of the, uh, the, the, uh, the unikernel environment, the file system, and these are pushed, these images are pushed onto what we call a registry. Our registry is based on a tool that's called Harbor. Harbor is a quite a well-known container registry, right, where you store information. GitHub also has one. There's something that's called GHCR, which is GitHub uh, Container Registry. And there is also something that's called MCR from Microsoft, which is called Microsoft, con uh, well, not this one, of course, <laughs> Microsoft Container Registry. Okay? Artifact Registry, whatever, Container Registry. And yeah, GACR, this is the GitHub Container Registry. These store the, uh, the images. So when we talk about build, push, so there were these items here, build, uh, let's say no, actually pull, build, pack, push. These are items that work with images, right? When I do instance create, I turn an image where I instantiate an image to an actual instance, to an actual virtual machine, right? So here I'm pulling, I'm actually pulling a runtime, not an image. I'm building, an, I'm building the file system. I'm packaging the image, I'm pushing the image, and this is the image name. And then when I instantiate, I create a virtual machine, an instance, from a given image. Okay? So, with an instance, the operations for an instance are create, stop, start, remove, logs, info. These are items going to do with an, with an image, with an, and of course, ls. With an image, I can do a pack, I can do a push, I can do a pull. Of course, I can list an image. I think I can also remove an image, right? But it's different than removing an instance. It's something that's running, that has a port, that consumes memory. An image, it's only a kind of a file, like a package, an application package, like an executable, that only consumes disk, disk space. I, I think I talked quite a lot about it. I'm not sure if I made it more complicated or is it clear what these items mean? What is an image? What is an instance? And how these actions work with them? Uh, Bala, were you the one asking the question? Is it clear? Yeah, yeah, this makes it better understanding. Uh, okay. I, I have a follow up question. Though. Yeah, please. Like, can we run these? Uh, graph instances locally? Now yes, yes, for sure. Uh, yes, yes. So uh, we're going to talk about that tomorrow. For now, we're going to look into Craft Cloud, but the sessions tomorrow are going to talk about, so when I use something like 
uh, let me show you here um, I have in Unicraft uh, what is it uh, catalog examples uh, these are local examples for example if I go to HTTP node 21 and let me see the readme uh, if I use this I think it should work let's see if it's work if it should be working okay so what it does it searches for the node 21 um, runtime uh, it, it found it it's pulling it so it's pulling the it's, it's this is not an image itself it's, it's more of a runtime it's pulling the image let's wait for it after it pulls the image it's going to build the application file system and after it builds the file system it's going to instantiate that to run locally let's just wait a bit for that it's it's a larger image and i think my uh, i'm using a lot of uh, of uh, of space of uh, bandwidth with the um, uh, with this video and uh, discord so this may uh, may pose some problems whatever uh, I'm going to show you by the time this is going to be pulled because it's a larger one uh, this would work but it's the same the same aspect right so what I'm doing here I'm instantiating on making things available on the remote end because I'm just I just want to have my service out there and be able to let the world know about it to interact with it but it's for sure also available to run it locally and we're going to talk more about that tomorrow Okay, something else. Any other questions? I just want to have, I, I, yeah, please. I, I, have, I only have one thing left to show you and then we can split in teams and start working on the cool stuff. Uh -huh, okay, okay, it's working. It's building the roof file system. It, it built it and now it should be able to start it. Okay, and it started it right so now this waits on port 8080 so if I'm going to go uh, on my system and use localhost port 8080 what what what, 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 did, what did I start ah, HTTP no 21 okay let me see yeah this is it it's a by world and this is because uh, in this uh, uh, let me just show you the server the source I'm using is by it's this is a very simple program right you, we can we can do something similar for next.js and for the others this is a local run of it so I think that that also answers by your your other question now okay something I want uh, I yeah please I have some feedback like I'm not sure about others but I'm uh, the text on your screen that you're sharing it's not legible like so clear. Uh, what is not visible sorry the text on the screen that you're sharing it's blurry so this terminal you mean yeah uh, the browser when you show browser uh, i'm not sure if it's only for me like someone else can also yep everyone how, how is the text for you It's also a little bit blurry. I think it's from Discord. Yeah, let me see if I'm able to do something to Discord to make it uh, better. Uh, let me see stream quality. Uh, you should be able to switch to better text readability mode. Uh, let me see. So I'm making it 128. I oh, know I can do that. Uh, let me see where this config should rest. Um, bum, bum, bum. I think you need to, to restart the, the stream and then you can choose an option it's going to the ability which streams that source quality but it is fine okay okay yeah okay so maybe when, when, when I do that I'm going to look into this okay uh, yeah sorry for the for this okay I'm going to look into it Okay, so uh, finally, the last thing I wanted to show you, just a second. Uh, oh, oh, no, no, it's here, sorry. 
Um, if you want to find more detailed information on a given uh, application, and you can do something like Craft Cloud Instance L uh, Instance Info, and then gives you some information with detailed items. And this also provides, for example, a format that's called JSON. Uh, no, uh, minus. It's not format. Uh, mm, okay, what is it? Craft Cloud mean minus O, sorry, minus O. And then if you minus, not two to minuses, sorry. And then if I use JQ, so this provides you a bit, a bit more info on what's actually happening, uh, how all this started. So for example, if I'm going to do another instance of Next.js, just a second, uh, where is it here? And if I'm now going to do a Craft Cloud instance info here, we're going to, yeah, I have to use BDP. So it, this gives you a bit more uh, info on different items, um, but generally it, it tells you uh, the uptime, how, how long it has been running, uh, uh, how long it took until it booted, and all of those items like this, these are available here. So note, basically what I suggest you do if you do Craft Cloud help, or if you want to do Craft Cloud uh, instance help, uh, you get all of those items here and they can tell you what, what you can do. Get, list, logs, remove, start, stop. These are um, um, things you can look into. Or Craft Cloud deploy help. Oh, no, no, minus, minus help, sorry. Right, this gives you uh, all the options you require. Apart from those, you have, uh, we hope to have very good documentation here, such that you can easily check uh, what's, um, um, uh, what, what the commands look like. There's an AP, uh, there's a CLI reference. Uh, we have a lot of guides. All of them are available uh, for you here. Note that for this session, that's all, this is something that's also linked here. Uh, we, we're going to see uh, what, what you need to do and based on those uh, we're going to ask you to fill the team names uh, to based on the team name to go through all the tasks here and see if everything is working okay for you. There, there's kind of a bit of work but this will get you quite well adjusted with the tasks at hand for, um, uh, for Craft Cloud. And that being said that would conclude my, uh, my presentation. I'm going to to then look uh, for the next sessions to have this better readability, uh, be a better readability uh, from um, from Discord. Uh, if there are any other questions from your side before we move into the practical side of things. Going once, going twice, Alrighty, then let me just stop the recording.